And welcome back to another edition of Words Mean Things. This week, the word of the week at Great Bend High School is endurance. I'm Stephen. I'm Mr. Heath. And we're going to talk about endurance. Endurance, indeed. Yep. So, what do we have to endure today? Endurance is one of those words that feels like a virtue, but isn't just because of the grandioseness of it, the kind of like grandeur that surrounds it. I see. I see. So let's talk a little bit about endurance, just the, the forms of it. First of all, endurance as a verb, no, as a noun. Endurance is a noun. Yeah. It's a thing. So it's, it's, it's like a, a quality of, right? It'd be like the quality to persist, to continue oh. despite difficulty, I would Pers- say. Perseverance. Yeah, perseverance. So the ability to continue even when uh, it's hard. Yeah. So I think endurance is a better word than perseverance just because it's more like concise to the point. And yet she endured. Yes. There you indeed. go. So then we could also use the word as an adjective, but that's it. interestingly, when you use it as an adjective, you're referring to a kind of athletic competition, an endurance right. race. So uh, endurance would be, uh, you know, being able to keep going, but an endurance race is almost always an athletic thing. But isn't it a race to see who can go the longest? Well, right, or it's just a long race that, that requires a lot of endurance exactly. in order to, to be successful. Uh, like attrition, uh, a war of attrition is just seeing which army can survive the longest, to endure the longest. Right, right. And that the, the, you think about the, the human cost of something like that, and it's kind of sad. Yeah. Sometimes endurance isn't a good thing. You need to know when to quit occasionally. Ooh, okay, that opens up a cool can of worms because endurance, generally we think of as a quality that is a, a positive. You got to have endurance in right. order to, to overcome an obstacle. But what about somebody who has so much endurance that they uh, almost become fanatical about it? They'd be stubborn. That would become stubbornness, right? Yeah. That they're, they're going to keep, that little ant is going to keep trying to chop down that rubber tree, uh, but there's no way. Yeah, that he ever will, and so the, the he's blinded uh, by his desire to to overcome a, a goal that is truly, by all reason, insurmountable. Yeah, like with the uh, ants, like you were saying, they will uh, leave a scent trail wherever they walk, and occasionally mm-hmm. they'll go in a circle, and because all of them follow the same scent trail, they'll just get stuck in these huge circles, Ooh. and. That's a good example of, hey, maybe you should stop doing that. We're, but caught, they, we're, we're caught in a feedback loop. Yeah. <laughs> so in, to endure is to, to keep going in spite of uh, the, in challenge, the challenge. But I think where sometimes people get these confused is, is you're not just – sometimes people think endurance is like going against the odds. No. I don't think so. I think, you know, it's going against – physical pain or emotional pain or uh, some sort of struggle that requires fortitude, requires uh, some sort of inner strength that goes beyond just what the mundane would require. Yeah, like consequences be darned. You're going to push through anyway. Right. And sometimes that's wonderful. And, and then other times it's probably dangerous. You can't exactly endure if there's no consequences to be had. Ooh. Ooh, that's interesting too. Is it really endurance? If if you don't ever get tired, yeah, and you run a marathon, it's not really an endurance race because well, it, you never did. You didn't overcome anything. In that case, you had to endure the training for your body to get to the uh, point. Unless you were born that way. If you're born that way, there's probably bigger problems you got to endure. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps indeed. But let's apply this to school in some way. Um, Academics especially. Ac- ac- yeah, because it is hard. You you spent all day at school, and then you had to go to your job or your sports practice or whatever. Then you got home, and then you... There's only so many hours you, in right, a day. You had to help with supper and clean up, and then you got to do the homework. And uh, at some point, you got to pay some attention to the significant other. And you, you're tired, but the homework's not done. But what you're really want to do is play the game uh, and but you don't have time to play the game but you go and play the game anyway next thing you know it's one o'clock in the morning and you didn't get that paper written what do you do yeah 
do you crunch? Do you spend the rest of the night up and write that essay? Or do you go to school and try to get it done in the brief moments you have while eating breakfast? Yeah, and you could try that. You or try or some combination thereof. But the truth is it's going to take some... Some, uh, some you fortitude. You have to some... figure out what things you need to cut out of your life to make time for something ah. like academics, which I don't know if that's necessarily a healthy thing, but it's just something you have to do. Right, and 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 then have some endurance. You know, it's not it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. You have to swallow that pill. <laughs> yeah. Like, is it red or is oils. it blue? Yeah. <laughs> well, now we're getting a bit too philosophical with it. All right. Well, what's coming up next week? Ah. Uh, what is coming up next week? I believe the word next week was, was it fortitude? Fortitude. It is fortitude. So we're going to find out all about uh, how much intestinal fortitude we have. But I'm glad you endured this with us. I'm Stephen. I'm Mr. Heath. And this has been Words Mean Things. See you next time. See ya.